run like a wild man. Wild man turns to loose. Be sharp. Be ready. Let's go. Define the moment. The mantra instilled by the legendary coach Suge Jordan in his 25 years at Auburn. And that is exactly what Heisman winners Pat Sullivan and Bo Jackson did in their glory years on the Plains. Now the time has arrived for this Tiger team to open the gates and walk down the path to define their own moment in Auburn history. You rarely get a second chance to define the moment, but that is exactly what the Georgia Bulldogs have in front of them. Against Florida, they let a chance to win the East slip away. But the dogs remain on the precipice of glory. They can define their season with a division clinching win and put an exclamation point in the Deep South's oldest rivalry. This ought to be good. Welcome as we present the Georgia Bulldogs with a nine and one record against the Auburn Tigers and Georgia takes the field first. Right behind them, the Tigers of Auburn. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Bruno Lundquist, along with Todd Blackledge and Jill Arrington. If you don't have goosebumps, we need to check the thermometer. Welcome to the SEC on CBS. This one goes back a few years. First game between these two played in 1892. And with the exception of three war years in World War I and World War II, it's been played continuously since 1898. And in the 105 meetings, the total difference in points between these two teams fought many five as for the relevance of this game it's very real for Georgia if they win today they are win in the uh, SEC championship game for the very first time if they lose and Florida wins tonight then the Gators are back in Atlanta for Auburn the story is just a little bit more complicated they must win out and if they do and LSU loses one of its two then the Auburn Tigers can get to the championship game, game in Atlanta. Don, let's talk first of all a little bit about the state of Georgia coming into this one. Well, this is such a huge football game. I mean, most Georgia followers are saying the biggest game in 20 years since their last SEC championship team in 1982. And football is such a what have you done for me lately business. The Bulldogs are 9 and 1. They're ranked number 7. But if they don't win today, it's going to be like so many seasons in the last several years. Nice record, good season, no championships. A must-win situation today for the Bulldogs. And this is a Georgia team that comes into this game hampered, hounded, really, by injury, particularly at the two outside receiver spots. Yeah, every team deals with injuries at this point in the season, but those top two names, two of their starting three receivers, very difficult to lose, puts more pressure on Fred Gibson. But the one thing that Georgia has today, they have a savvy quarterback in sophomore David Green. He was the freshman of the year in this league last year. He's not had the same kind of numbers as a year ago, but he has thrown 19 touchdowns, only seven interceptions. And the best thing about him, he has never lost a game as a starting quarterback on an opponent's home field. He has to have that poise today. For the last couple of years, the Auburn Tigers have featured one of the outstanding running backs in all of college football. Carnell Cadillac Williams. They lost him for the second season in a row. The injury this time occurred against Florida. But unlike a year ago when this team really, really struggled without him, they've called upon the talents of Ronnie Brown. And Ronnie Brown has stepped up big time with an average of nearly 131 points, uh, yards rather, and eight touchdowns in relief of Cadillac Williams. Yeah, Ronnie Brown has seized his opportunity, and Auburn wants to run the football first, but I think to win the game today, they must have some big plays from their quarterback, Jason Campbell. He has played very well since taking over for Daniel Cobb in the second half of the Florida game, but he can't just play not to lose the game for his team today. He's got to do some things either as a runner or a thrower to put Auburn in a position to win this football game at home. Temperature of 50 degrees, humidity of 90%. 
breeze out of the northwest at 15 and light rain is in the forecast for the rest of the afternoon. Georgia won the toss and deferred to the second half. 106th meeting. Auburn leads the series. There's that point differential we spoke of. Five points over 105 games. And a small note of irony. Georgia has a better record here in Auburn than do the Auburn Tigers in meetings between these two. Brett Kerouac will kick off. Here's Trey Smith, number 22, one of the two deep men. Roderick Hood, number 36, is the other. Roderick Hood drifts back and will take a knee. That one comes out to the 20. And we check in with the third member of our commentary team. Here's Jill Arrington. Well, Vern, like you've talked about, not only is this game important because it's the Deep South's most played rivalry and also the SEC championship game implications, but it's also important, very important, to 25 of Auburn's players who are Georgia natives. In fact, seven of the 22 Auburn starters come from the state of Georgia, and Coach Tuberville told me he has put the emotions of this game in the hands of those Georgia's players, of those Auburn players. But for the Bulldogs, it's also important. The headlines read, it's dome or doom for the dogs. And Coach Rick said everyone's holding their collective breath, and he doesn't want to disappoint those Georgia fans. All right, here's Campbell Jell. Loose on the option as he comes to the near side. This the dimension he adds that Daniel Cobb does not. Yeah, they don't really show enough option to make you practice against it and prepare for it. But Jason Campbell, the thing that he has done especially this year eight and three as a starter he has thrown eight touchdowns only one interception since taking over as a starter he has not made mistakes and as you mentioned he brings that athleticism to the table from the quarterback position Jason Campbell from Taylorsville Mississippi split backs and now they're in the eye and on first and ten the toss sweep to the left side good block from the fullback and Ronnie Brown out to the 40-yard line. And let's check the Alamo starting lineup. Offensive line for the Tigers, Para Lindsey, Nowland, Monrico Crittenden, and a big one, Marcus McNeil, listed at 6'9", 360. Ronnie Brown at tailback, Brandon Johnson the fullback, Willis, Errol Machado, and Robert Johnson at tight end. We are going to see some tremendous collisions between fullbacks and middle linebackers in this game today. We've got two hard-nosed fullbacks in this ballgame. Here's a play-action pass out of the backfield to Ronnie Brown. And he struggles out of the tackle and across the 50 with a first down Auburn. You know, Carnell Williams may be the more dynamic tailback in the flash here. But this guy is the more physical back, the guy that's probably able to break a few more tackles. Where Carnell would make you miss, Ronnie Brown's going to run through tackles and drag people with him. He lost 10 to 12 pounds in the offseason, yet he's a more physical player. Usually it's the other way around. You gain weight to be more physical. Ronnie Brown lost weight and became more physical. Fake the draw. They give it off. Brown into the secondary. What a tough run. And another double-digit game for Auburn. And another example of Ronnie Brown carrying Georgia defenders with him. Good blocking on the left side, but watch at the point of contact. One, two, nobody can wrap him up. Three Georgia defenders it takes to bring him down. Powerful running by young Ronnie Brown. 53 yards on this drive. Double tight end set on first down. Uh, this is uh, this is my least favorite play in football. Jason Campbell tried to draw the offside, but I don't think Georgia was offsides. And, and what you what you tell a quarterback in a center is, if you feel him jump offsides, he snaps the ball automatically. Well, there was movement by Georgia, but they never crossed the neutral zone. And so what you do is you waste a play. Jason Campbell took the snap, dropped a knee, and instead of getting five yards, now you're second and twelve. I never have liked that philosophy of trying to to get the easy five yards that way again a double tight upset 
Aroma Shadu is in motion to the right side. Play action, pressure from the backside, and it's intercepted. Look out yeah. by Sean Jones. Gets a downfield block. Two men to beat. There's the cut. And another cut as Campbell saves six. Campbell saves six, but Marcus McNeil, the giant freshman offensive tackle, is the guy who ran downfield and forced the returner to cut back to the middle where Campbell could make the play. Pressure by Georgia. Watch the pressure come on the inside. Play action pass. Pollock is getting a rush. Boss Bailey from the outside, and there's the interception by Sean Jones. The pressure from Boss Bailey forced the high throw. And once again, Georgia, excellent red zone defense comes through again. That is a 58-yard return with the interception. Sean Jones first of the year. Georgia with David Green at quarterback. Hand off to J.T. Wall, the fullback, gets the first carry for the Bulldogs, and he runs into Reggie Torbor, number 82. David Green, whose parents had an Auburn tint. His dad went to here. His daughter, his uh, sister Leslie, graduated from Auburn last spring, and his grandfather attended Auburn as well. On second down, play fake. Drills it. And let's take another look at the interception. Okay, I want to show you Boss Bailey. He's right here, and what's going to happen is he is going to come so quick with his speed, and because of the play action fake, Jason Campbell had his back to the blitz, and by the time he turned around and found him, he had to get rid of the football, and he made the high throw, and that ball was picked off, and a huge play by the Georgia defense because of the pressure, the quick pressure from Boss Bailey. Backs are split on first down. Musa Smith, number 32. Wow. Safety blitz. Junior Rose Green timed it perfectly. He came up there late. Here he is right here. Now watch him just time it so that he hits it right at the snap. I mean, he comes in there full speed and they're not able to cut him off. That's good timing by the safety, Junior Rose Green. Second and 17. Smith going left. Don Terrio Thomas with the tackle. And let's check the Georgia offense, Stinchcomb, Brock, Knight, Breedlove, and Kareem Marshall. Musa Smith, JT Wall in the backfield. Michael Johnson gets a start, along with Fred Gibson. Ben Watson is the tight end. Fred Gibson, the go-to guy. Expect to see him get doubled on this situation. He's down at the bottom of the screen, number 82. Try to put a guy right up in his face and get physical with him and then double him. Out of the backfield, dropped. And this is the kind of treatment that Fred Gibson's going to get most of the day. They're going to have somebody lined up on him, and it's just going to be kind of double coverage. One guy outside, one guy inside, but that was just a called screen right away that JT Wall couldn't hold on to. Billy Bennett has missed only four this year. His long of the season is 47. This will be from 45. Now he's missed five. And four of those five have been in the last three weeks. I mean, he started off great and has kind of hit a little bit of a bump here in the last three weeks. Out of Kilgo's hole. Billy Bennett misfires. We are still scoreless. Billy Bennett pushes it right from 45. Three of his last six. And Auburn takes over. First down and 10. They move the ball at will. Last possession until pressure from Chris Clemens forced the interception. 
off the arm of Jason Campbell. Oh, my goodness. At the point of the exchange, Jonathan Sullivan, number 57, as we check the Georgia defense. Will Thompson, Jonathan Sullivan, who's a bit banged up, and David Pollock, who is having a sensational season on the outside with Ken Veal. Chris Clemens back after an injury. Boss Bailey also a little dinged with a knee. Tony Gilbert in the middle. It's DeCorey Bryant, Curry, Sean Jones, and Bruce Storm. Here's the option for the second time. Campbell keeps, cuts, got some room. Out to the 37-yard line. Kentrell Curry, number four, flying, leaves his feet, catches him, but nice run by Jason Campbell. And a nice patience by Jason Campbell, waiting for this to open up. Now watch him double-team. Watch him double-team David Pollock. They've got the tight end and the tackle on him right here. They're not going to let David Pollock get up and disrupt that option. They double-team him. And then a nice cut back inside by Jason Campbell. Good patience on the second time that Auburn's run the option. Now they will bring the chain out and check to see if he got the 15 needed for the first down. I made the comment that, that for Auburn to win, that Jason Campbell would have to do more than just not get his team beat. He's done a great job of not making mistakes since he's taken over the starting role. Today, to beat this Georgia team, he's going to have to do some things outside of that. And we've seen that a couple times here as a runner. Now, he uh, threw the ball fairly well in that first uh, series, except for the interception he threw when the pressure was created by Chris Clemens and, uh, and, and overthrew for the interception. But... So far, he looks pretty comfortable running the football as well as throwing it. And he did pick up the first down. It's first and ten. That's Trey Smith in motion out of the backfield. Campbell straight drop back. Looking left. Across the middle. Incomplete. Here's Campbell. Georgia showing a four-man front. They bring just four. Across the middle. Tight end. Robert Johnson. Chris Clemens up high. And it was Boss Bailey also, or Chris Clemens, rather. Yeah, Chris Clemens, I uh, mistakenly said that Boss Bailey created the pressure on the interception, but it was actually Chris Clemens, who is back playing and healthier than he's been in the last three weeks, brought the pressure on the backside. And he was the one who made the tackle that time on Robert Johnson, but they are happy to get Chris Clemens back because when he's been out, they've actually had to take a safety, Thomas Davis, and play him as a linebacker. Hand off to Brown, got an opening, and he has got room. Touchdown, Auburn. This is one area that Auburn works very hard at. They work on their red zone. Or third and short. Watch Sean Jones to safety. He's unblocked and he doesn't make the tackle. Number six is there. There's nobody there to block him, but Ronnie Brown runs right through the arm tackle. Bobby Petrino, the offensive coordinator, said they work really hard on third and short, third and medium, and that's why they come into this game leading the SEC in third down conversions. 53 yard touchdown run. And the exclamation point is added as Damon Duvall hits his 120th consecutive extra point. Up the middle through Sean Jones, chased by the Corey Bryant, but a touchdown Brown. And Auburn leading 7-0. Sends it deep. Grabbed by Fred Gibson. Bounces off the tackle and then is down at the 20 yard line. 137 yards to five. Mm. Auburn's favor. Here's David Green. And he'll go from the spread on first down from the 21. Green feeling a little pressure from the backside in and out of the hands of Fred Gibson at the 26-yard line. And let's check this uh, Tiger defense. Brett Evans gets the start today. DeMarco McNeil, Spencer Johnson, and Reggie Torbor. 
Carlos Dansby is having a, an all-conference year. Mark Brown, the leading tackler, and Don Terry is Thomas. And in the secondary, it's Hood, Rose Green, Robinson, and Rogers. Second and ten. Musa Smith. He picks up five. Maybe six. Third down's been kind of good and bad for Georgia. They were 10 of 16 in their win last week against Ole Miss, but 0 for 13 in their only loss of the season against Florida. Well played, Musa Smith. That punt. Fourth down. And 0 for 2 today against Auburn. 0 for 3, rather. Don Terry is Thomas with the tackle. Just the early feel is that Auburn is playing more downhill in this game than Georgia is. I mean, they are getting after it a little bit more at the line of scrimmage, and Georgia's kind of on their on their heels a little bit. Jonathan Kilgo on to punt. Roderick Hood, who started the season as the punt return man for Auburn, then lost his job because of a fumble against LSU, has regained it. So he's back. Here's Kilgo, end over end, and Hood grabs it at the 28-yard line. There's a block in the back, but no flag is thrown. And great field position. Rodney Hood, it's picked up. That is a fumble. And it's a live ball. Georgia has it. So Rodney Hood, who fumbled against LSU, fumbles against Georgia. And it was Sean Jones again. He got the interception earlier. He gets the fumble recovery here. And this looked like an excellent return because Donna Young, number 10, got a huge block to spring him on the sideline. Watch the end of the play on the Auburn sideline. From behind, he's tackled by Burt jo Jones, and the ball is stripped out and picked up by Sean Jones. Great hustle from behind by Burt Jones, a senior out of Jackson, Georgia. I haven't seen much from Musa Smith yet, and uh, we do not on this play. Picks up a yard, maybe a yard and a half. Well, let's take another look at that Roderick Hood fumble. Tom. Yeah, right before commercial, we had some boos from the home crowd thinking that Hood was down before the ball came out. But great hustle play by Burt Jones. And it looked like a fumble clearly. Now, wait till you see this angle. The officials obviously couldn't see this, but we have the luxury of seeing it clearly, the ball out before Hood's knee hit the ground. So a great call by the officials here in the ballgame. Four minutes to go first quarter of play. Here's the fake toss, Green with room to run. But he throws it instead to Ben Watson. And that's the most successful play thus far as David Green finds Ben Watson for a gain of 19. Really nice fake by David Green. I mean, it was him selling the fake on the toss that opened up that play. If he rushes that or if he doesn't really sell the fake, then the Auburn defense doesn't buy it and Watson doesn't come free. But he really was patient on faking that toss and he got the easy completion to his tight end. Tyson Browning has made his first appearance now. He's the tailback, goes out to the left side, and will set up as a flanker. Green pressured. Shakes one tackle, then goes deep, and there's a battle for it at the five. It's incomplete. Jay Ratliff and Mark Brown applying the pressure on David Green. Yeah, we don't normally think of David Green as being elusive, but he did a pretty nice job that time of getting away from pressure enough to throw the football downfield. The way that looked from the beginning, it looked like it was going to be a sack all the way for Auburn. Second down and 10. 325 to go. The difference in the ball game thus far, a 53-yard run. Ronnie Brown. Now Tony Milton, number nine, is in. Play fake to Milton. Green has the man open. That's Michael Johnson, who's playing in place of the injured Terrence Edwards. Carlos Dansby, number 11. Maybe the best of the linebackers. In 2001, he had a beach ball for the ages. Darian Durant pass out of the air. And then that tip drill pays big dividends. He yeah. was an amazing play. You don't see that very often. He's a guy who was a wide receiver in high school, has great catching ability, 
And uh, he and David Pollock of Georgia, two of the most dynamic defensive players in this league. Here's Green. That one sails, and Milton makes the catch. But then he is banged down at the 25-yard line. Horace Willis, number six, was the first man there. Well, because that ball sailed in the air so long, and it hung up there for so long, it enabled Horace Willis to track it down and stop him short of the first down. That was a long swing pass out to Tyson Browning, and by the time he got the catch, uh, a lot of defenders were there. Billy Bennett talking to himself. He missed from 45. This one from 43. Brian Jordan snaps it. And Bennett knocks it home. So the Bulldogs are on the board. 7-3, Auburn. 7-3, Auburn. Sends it in the direction of Roderick Hood, who gathers it at the four. That's a moon. Off to the 30-yard line. Not Cooper Wallace listed as the third team tight end, tight right. Here's Campbell looking in his direction, fires it deep for Cooper Wallace. And it's picked off. Number six again. Sean Jones. <laughs> Pick six for Sean Jones. Mike, and this interception, now we saw David Pollock make an incredible interception against South Carolina. Wait till you see this one. I mean, he is trailing the play, trailing Cooper Wallace, and makes an incredible interception. Watch at the top of your screen on the right sideline. Sean Jones has no idea where the ball is till right now and turns around and makes the interception, just rips it away from Cooper Wallace. What a play by the sophomore out of Atlanta. Two turnovers, two interceptions for Sean Jones, and a fumble recovery. And the third turnover of the first quarter. New quarterback, D.J. Shockley, fires it out. And the catch is made by Michael Johnson, but he's dumped by Roderick Hood. So D.J. Shockley, who played only one series last week and had a fumble exchange. Yeah, fumbled a, a center exchange on the third play, and Mark Rick just said, hey, I didn't feel good about putting him back in again. He assured him that he would play him again today. But ever since the Kentucky game, when he played really well, he has not had the same kind of success when he's come into the ball game. We've reached the end of one from Jordan-Hare Stadium. Our score is seven to three, and we'll be back after this message and a word from your local station. We began the start of the second quarter from Jordan-Hare Stadium, Auburn, Alabama, with the Tigers leading the Bulldogs by a seven to three score. Back. Second series for Shockley. Heads right. Out near the 40, let's go back to Jill. Well, with Ronnie out, what can we expect from Trey Smith? We hear a lot about his quickness on the field. Oh, right. Uh, Trey Smith, he kind of reminds me a lot of myself. Be real quick, slash running back. You know, when he get in open, he's, he's pr practically gone. He's going to be something tough, huh? Oh, yeah. He's going to be a real good ball player for us. All right. Thanks so much for talking to us and get well soon. Thank you, Jill. David Green back in the quarterback, so Shockley in for one play. Third and three. And Georgia still without a conversion on third down. And they still don't have one. Michael Johnson takes a shot. Connors Rogers. Well, Traveris Robinson came on a safety blitz. They've had some success with the safety blitz, timing it up at the snap. And David Green had to get rid of it right away. Good timing on the blitz, and then good timing by Carlos Rogers to get his hands in there and rip the football out. Man-to-man -man coverage because of the blitz. And Auburn holds again on third down. Jonathan Kilgo's fourth punt of the ball game. Roderick Hood awaits this effort at the 20-yard line. Hood drifting over to his right, grabs it at the 19. Shakes a tackle, shakes another. Looks for help, gets it, 
and Kilgo has to knock him out of bounds at the 42-yard line. That's a, a little bit of a lack of discipline by the Georgia coverage team because you punt him all the way to the right numbers and then he reverses the field and comes completely back across your coverage. Missed tackles, guys getting out of their lanes a little bit. Nice block by Horace Willis to lead him down the field and, uh, and a good reaction, a good return by Roderick Hood. He had a good return earlier and he fumbled the football. And that time he held on to it and gets his football team in good position. That's a 41-yard punt and a 36-yard return. The earlier return was for 40 yards. Best field position of the football game for Auburn right here. Here's Campbell, hands it off to Brown, who's back on the field. They retaped his right ankle and sent him back into battle. Good blocking on the inside. The guards Crittenden and Lindsay, the center, Nowlin. There's the pull by Crittenden, the, the lead block by the fullback Brandon Johnson and Ronnie Brown back in the football game. You see he runs with such good leverage too. Lowers that shoulder, gets right into the body of the tackler Sean Jones. Second down and three, Brown 97 yards, nearing another 100-yard effort. Might get it on this play. That'll be close, the 36-yard line. Tackle made by David Pollock. Ronnie Brown, a young man from Cartersville, Georgia, They've got a coffee named after him at the <laughs> Meg Pie Coffee Cafe. <laughs> Gourmet chocolate sauce, caramel, steamed milk, whipped cream, and chocolate decorations. Mm -hmm. Won a state championship at Cartersville High School. Uh, one of his teammates is an offensive lineman for Georgia, Josh Brock, and he's a little upset they don't have a drink named after him. Third and two. Brown heading left, trying to get the first down, and does so. This is what Auburn has done so well all year. Coming into the game, 47% conversions on third down because they get a lot of these third and shorts. That's three times today now they've had third and one or two, and they've converted all three times. And now Ronnie Brown, over 100 yards here in the first half. At 163 against Florida, 224 in the win over Ole Miss last week, limited play, only nine carries for 41 yards. Here's Campbell, pumps once, comes right. Out of two tackles. And a first down at the 17-yard line. A nice heads-up play by Jason Campbell. This was a quick throw call. I mean, it's a quick three-step drop, plant and throw, but it wasn't there. And so he made the quick decision to run the football, and you see the explosiveness getting away from David Pollock and then also getting away from the tackle of Tony Gilbert. I mean, that's just an excellent athletic play by Jason Campbell. Tony Gilbert, he's in coverage. Now he's got to chase the quarterback. Nice heads-up play by Jason Campbell. Gain of 16, first down. Brown, the deep back behind Brandon Johnson. Here's the toss. Misdirection play. Will Thompson heading over to try and help on the tackle, which is made by DeCorey Bryant, number 22. Yeah, really nice play by DeCorey Bryant, stringing that play out. This is where Georgia defensively has been outstanding this year. And look at what they've done in the red zone. Only 12 touchdowns in 28 possessions against their defense. I mean, that is an outstanding TD percentage not allowing. And uh, they, they, you know, I guess you use the old adage, they bend, but they don't break. They give up yards, they give up some plays, but when they get in the 20, they have been really tough to score on, particularly touchdown. Second down, eight. Seven, three. As we play with two minutes to go in the first half. Now, movement. They got the uh, the guard, Danny Lindsay, number 68. He was backing out of his stance a little bit early. It, what happened was Jason Campbell was trying to check to the, a new play. He was audibling at the line of scrimmage, and those linemen are down in their stance a long time. You see, those linemen are down. And here's Lindsay right here, and he's in his stance a long time, and, and Campbell's trying to check and just lift it up out of his stance. And David Green... Second down, 
Well, the Manu starts in motion to the left side. Play fake. Good block. Campbell goes deep in the end zone. It's incomplete. Got rid of that one. Aroma Shadu was the intended receiver closest to the ball. A little mix up too because uh, it looked like Jason Campbell was expecting a post pattern and uh, Aroma Shadu was running to the outside. And a third and 13 at the 20. Dave yeah. Duvall, excuse me, no. is the place kicker, and he has not had a great year. No, he sure hasn't. And again, this is the part of the field and the type of defense where Georgia is most difficult to figure out. A lot of combination coverages. Three down. Pollock coming from the left side. Here's Campbell. He'll run. Watch out. Gets a great block. And is out of bounds. First and goal. You know who got the big block? Ronnie Brown. Ronnie Brown. Ronnie Brown with the key, key block. Now this formation confused Georgia a little bit. They took Ronnie Brown and they moved him out as a wide receiver. And that forced a little confusion in the Georgia defense. Tony Gilbert had to run out there. Now watch at the end of this run. Ronnie Brown gets the block on Tony Gilbert. And that springs Jason Campbell for the first down. They put him out as a wide receiver. He was covered by Gilbert, and then he turned and blocked Gilbert and enabled Campbell to get the first down. Heads up play by Ronnie Brown. He's behind his quarterback on first and goal with 1.45 remaining. Campbell still has it. Now he does not. Instead, it's an Auburn touchdown to Brandon Johnson, the fullback. Nice play fake by Jason Campbell. Everybody's thinking Ronnie Brown. And here's the fullback right here. And watch him just slip out into the flat on the play. They play fake, good fake. And Brandon Johnson able to slip out inside the Georgia defense. Did you see David Pollock go after Ronnie Brown? You bought, have to. Bought the play completely. Yep. Extra point is up and good. Well, Georgia needs to win the cinch of spot in the SEC championship game. Auburn needs to win out and have LSU lose at least once, and they will get to Atlanta. So there is much on the line as we head to halftime break. Right now, here's Jill Arrington with Mark Richt. Oh, Coach Richt, you've recovered three turnovers, but only three points on the board. Why are you having so much trouble moving the ball? Right now, they're just whipping us up front, and... Uh... Run game, pass a game, it's about the same. So we've got to get our old line to play. And when we do have opportunities, we've got to make the plays. Will we see Fred Gibson more involved in the second half? Well, we'll see. We haven't been able to hold the ball long enough to do anything yet. All right, Coach. Well, thank you. Good luck. Thank you, Jill. Halftime in Auburn. And the Tigers lead the Bulldogs 14-3. to Right now, let's go back to New York and Tim Brando. Auburn leads 14 to 3 as we get set for the start of quarter number three. Vern Lundquist, Todd Blackledge, Jill Arrington. Bulldogs have come from behind once this season. They dominated the second half at Kentucky and won that one 52 24. Well, this is the <laughs> this is time to answer the bell if you're the Georgia Bulldogs. A bad first half, but 30 minutes left. That one picked up on the scoop by Fred Gibson. And he manages to counterpunch it out to the 34-yard line. Just a moment ago, Jill Arrington talked with Auburn coach Tom Tuberville. Control the game. How will you maintain the momentum in the second half? Well, the big, big reason that we were able to win the first half was we were 5 for 7 on third down conversions. They were 0 for 7. And uh, if we continue to play like that on third down, we're going to have a good second half. But I'm sure they got some tricks up their sleeve. We're going to have to stop number 82 this half. All they, right. they didn't get the ball to him. All right, Coach. Well, thank you. Thank you. No, they did not. Musa Smith. Nice spin move and a quick first down for Georgia to uh, start the third quarter. But they trail 14 to 3. And among the other names we haven't called much is Musa Smith. Yeah. And that play right there may have been the best play for Georgia right now to get back in this game they got the first thing they got to do is they got to answer the physical challenge that Auburn has given them in this game Auburn was the more physical team in the first half 
Musa Smith only eight carries in that first half for 36 yards, but that one, a very good play here and good field position for the Bulldogs. First down and 10, Green play fake, goes deep. Michael Johnson, he's got the ball out of bounds. Junior from Tulsa, a 14-yard gain. See, now what David Green has to realize and remember is if Auburn is going to pay that much attention to Fred Gibson and double him, then he's got to get the ball to other people. He's tried to hit Ben Watson a couple times. That was the third catch for Michael Johnson. But there's going to be some other guys open if people are going to double Fred Gibson. The handoff Smith, they'll test the middle. Now the Georgia receivers, they are missing Gary as well as Terrence Edwards. Reggie Brown, Michael Johnson, Brian McClendon, and Mary O'Reilly are the four we expect to see yeah. before the game is over. Michael Johnson is a big receiver, not a guy that's going to run by you. And even though they may double Fred Gibson, that doesn't mean you stop trying to throw him the football. I mean, you still throw it up for him because he's 6'4", and even in double coverage, can go up in traffic and make a catch for you in the right situation. Second down, seven from the 36. Comes the blitz. Green. It's tipped or fluttered out. I'm not sure which. Yeah, it was tipped. And he had Fred Gibson open. Looked like Dontarius Thomas was able to get a hand on the football, but they had Fred Gibson open on the curl route. And watch number 54, Dontarius Thomas, gets his hands up and knocks that ball away. And now this is the uh, crunch time for Georgia. 0 for 7 in the first half. And their first big third down opportunity here in Auburn territory. Gibson matched up with Carlos Rogers, bottom of the screen. He comes up to press him. Now they're showing blitz. They're going to drop out on this one. And Green from the spread. No blitz. Pulls up, goes deep, triple coverage, and Fred Gibson makes the catch. See, even when there's people around him, still take your chances and throw the football for him because he's 6'4". He's a basketball player, so he knows how to jump up and get a ball in traffic. And even though he's well covered, he knows how to go get the football. This is a good decision by David Green. You think he's not open, don't throw it. Give the guy a chance to make a play, and Fred Gibson made a play. That is a gain of 18 yards. Mark Rick telling us earlier this week that Fred Gibson had his best game ever at Georgia last week in the win over Ole Miss. Here's J.T. Wall plunges down to the one-foot yard, one-foot you know, line. Mark Rick is not an overly emotional guy, but he must have had some good things to say in the locker room at halftime because this is an outstanding, responsive drive for the Georgia Bulldogs. They did not look like the seventh ranked team in the country for 30 minutes in that first half. They look like it on this drive. And this is the tenth play of the drive. The ball just inside the one. Two fullbacks, quarterback sneak, Green goes left, touchdown. A great drive by the Georgia Bulldogs. I mean, it could not have come not only a great drive and you get the touchdown, but they did it by being physical. They came out and they established Musa Smith. The offensive line came out and knocked Auburn in the mouth a couple plays. They got the big catch and got Fred Gibson involved in the game. I mean, everything they needed to have happen in that opening drive they had. Now Billy Bennett for the extra point out of Jonathan Kilgo's hold. Up and good. Ten forty six to go in the third quarter. Margin of difference in the game is now four. Tumor drugs on Tumor's corner and after Auburn victories they come out in toilet paper Tumor's corner. Today's game brought to you in high definition television as are all of our SEC telecasts. Yeah, the amazing thing about that Tumors Corner in the Auburn football facility in their Hall of Fame area, they have an actual replica of Tumors Corner. They have trees in there that has toilet paper on it. I mean, they even <laughs> enshrined Tumors Corner. It's, it's, it's great. Pretty good environment oh, here. Oh, this huh? is a good place. This is a good place. Here's Brett Kerouac with the kick. Up and very, very short. Taken at the 28-yard line. And a good return now by Auburn all the way out to the 46. 
Roderick Hood, number 36, scooted up and grabbed it and gives Auburn terrific field position. Ronnie Brown, Trey Smith in the backfield. This is Trey Smith in motion heading to the left. Now coming back to the right, gets the handoff. Ronnie Brown, the lead blocker, and Trey Smith cut down after a two-yard game. David Pollock made the tackle. Second down and two. High formation on second down. Handoff to Brown, breaks a tackle inside the 30 and down at the 29-yard line. See, here again is the dimension that he gives you a little bit different than Carnell Williams. Where Carnell's a slasher, this guy's more of a banger. When he cuts it in there, he drops that shoulder, and if you don't bring a lot on the tackle, you're not going to bring him down. Look at the, the leg strength. Powerful lower body, 223 pounds, and uh, never stops moving those legs. And a first down and 10 inside the 30. 7.09 to go in the third quarter of play. And off to Brown again. A couple of yards, left side. Brandon Johnson leading the way. And Ronnie Brown from Cartersville, Georgia, said yesterday afternoon it's a town of about 20,000. Auburn has run seven plays on this drive, and all seven have been running plays, and now they have to play without their lead blocking fullback, Brandon Johnson. Second down eight. Here's Campbell back. Comes right as his big tight end, Robert Johnson. Nice open field tackle is made at the 24-yard line. Well, the new offensive coordinator here at Auburn, Bobby Petrino, was the head uh, offensive coordinator at Jacksonville for the last three years, accepted a chance to get back in to college football. His dad, for 29 years, was the head coach of Carroll College in Helena, Montana. Bobby and his brother, both successful coaches. Third down and two. And Campbell will go from the spread with Ronnie Brown to his left. Brown, Campbell, got to the five, touchdown Auburn! Does the Georgia defense have for Ronnie Brown? Everyone collapsed on him. Ronnie Brown is right here. Now they're going to fake it to him, and then Campbell's going to keep it and run it out this side. A lot of teams do this in college football now. Fake it to the back. Everybody goes with Campbell. Danny Lindsay with the key block that springs Jason Campbell. But the respect for Ronnie Brown opened it up for Campbell. Damon Duvall with the extra point. As impressive as the Georgia opening drive in this half, the Auburn counterpunch was really something. Campbell for the touchdown. And the Auburn band playing glory, glory, hallelujah as we went to the commercial break. Now Damon Duvall will kick off. Fred Gibson, Tim Jennings are the two deep men. Gibson has a kickoff return for a touchdown this season. That was back against Clemson in the first game of the year. And he takes this one at the three. My oh my. Washard Gilliard, number three. And again, the kicking game so important. That was set up by a fine kickoff return. Green at the one. Reggie Torbor. Reggie Torbor just blew right around the best offensive lineman on the Georgia football team, John Stinchko. I mean, he's coming to the line side. You see, they went play action, so that made it take some time. And Stinchko unable to block Reggie Torbor on that play action pass. And Auburn has the Georgia offense right where they want him. 
second down and long on their own two, and the crowd right behind them in the end zone. Musa Smith breaks a tackle. He's got room down the right side, chased by Carlos Rogers, but a huge what a play. play. What a play by Musa Smith. Now, one of the problems is Auburn went with a safety blitz. They brought a safety. Watch this guy. He's going to come up and commit inside. And because he does that, it removes one of the other defenders. And when Musa Smith popped out of there, there was only one guy. That was Carlos Rogers, and he was too far inside. What a response by Musa Smith. He got that play pretty much on his own. That's a game of 32. He gets a rest. Tony Milton in the backfield. Play fake. Green goes deep. He goes for Gibson. There's a tussle, and it's incomplete at the 21. Horace Willis was stride for stride with Gibson. You know, the problem, I think, on that one was his bad thumb is his left thumb. And in this particular case, that was his outside hand. And this ball was thrown very well over the outside shoulder, but he has to catch it with his left hand. And watch as he reaches out there. He's just not able to get that left hand completely on the football. That was a good throw, just a tough catch for Fred Gibson. Second down and 10. Blitz again. And nothing doing on this play. T.J. Jackson, the only true freshman who is uh, in the defensive rotation for Auburn. Take a look at T.J. Jackson. Here he is, just gets quickness off the ball and gets right inside the block of Josh Brock and gets that play in the backfield. But good quickness by the freshman. Third and 14. Green deep, man open. Johnson at the 50. First down, Georgia. Excellent protection up front. Michael Johnson is the receiver up top. Here he is. Now watch, he's just going to run a little corner route. And David Green, because the protection is so solid, he's able to hang in there and make the nice throw to the sideline. Excellent protection up front against the four-man rush. And David Green delivers a huge completion. First down at the 50. 21-10 Auburn. Here's Green. Finds Johnson again, out of bounds at the 38 and a half yard line. That's a gain of 11. And time now for the answer to the Aflac. trivia question. The most played rivalry in Division 1A, Minnesota and Wisconsin. They'll tee it up for the 112th time on the 23rd for the Paul Bunyan Axe. And David Green looks over this Auburn defense. He's rebounded. He was 4 of 11 in the first half, now 9 of 18. Quarterback keeper, Green weaves his way to the 34-yard line. It's a good call by Mark Rick because uh, this is not what Auburn would expect. Now, if D.J. Shockley was in the game, yes, you'd expect this. But you don't expect David Green to run the football in a designed quarterback draw. And that's exactly what it is. He's going to follow the block of Josh Brock in a huge hole, in part because Auburn in no way anticipating David Green running that football. Second down and five. Green with a play fake, goes deep over Roderick Hood. The catch is made, and it's going to be first and goal as Michael Johnson makes his seventh grab of the ball game. And credit Musa Smith with the key block. This was a play action fake, but watch Musa Smith get up here and hit the safety on a blitz. They're bringing the blitz of Traveris Robinson, and Musa Smith stones him right there in the hole, and that enables David Green to throw the pass downfield. Michael Johnson beats Roderick Hood. But this play never gets off if Musa Smith doesn't stick his nose in there and make a big time block. On this drive, and that's over Gibson's head. Pretty good idea because they got single coverage on Fred Gibson on Horace Willis. Horace Willis is a pretty big corner at six foot and 200 pounds, but still Fred Gibson at 6'4 is a pretty good matchup when he gets single. 
second and goal. 23 and 23 play selection today. Second down and goal. At Smith in motion wide to the right. Again, designed quarterback keeper. Fumble the ball. The fumble in the end zone. Touchdown recovered by Georgia. I think John Stinchko may have come up with the ball. Or was it Kareem Marshall? We'll see. It was one of the big uglies, that's for sure. <laughs> it was John Stinchko with the touchdown. Again, a designed quarterback run caught Auburn by surprise. Empty backfield. It's a run all the way by David Green, but he fumbles at the end of the play, and John Stinchcomb standing there watching the ball falls on it for the touchdown. Now the senior academic All-American with a fortuitous recovery. Extra point is up and good. Boy, we have seen three monster drives in a row. Two by Georgia, one by Auburn, and John Stinchcomb. Probably never dreamed of scoring a touchdown in the ball game. John Stinchcomb is a microbiology major. He's a minor in religion. He just had a prayer answered. We'll be right back. 21-17 here. Here's Hood. Again, roaming. And this time, not quite as far with the kickoff return out to the 33-yard line. First down, four-point game again. Here's Campbell across the middle behind Aroma Shadu. I don't think Aroma Shadu thought the ball was coming to him. As you see Jason Campbell chatting with him, I mean, he didn't look like he expected that football at all. He was coming across. We've seen him catch that pass earlier in the ball game for a big third down conversion in the first part of the game. But that time when he crossed the field, he didn't look like he expected the football. Second down and 10 from the 33. Here's Campbell with a handoff to Brown going left. Tries to bounce it outside and can't this time. It's going to bring up a big third down. Ken Veal, number 96. This could be a pretty good scene for the next 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. That's the end of the third quarter with the score, 21-17. We'll return right after this message and this word from your local station. We start the fourth, Jordan-Hare Stadium, Auburn, Alabama, 86,063 here. Everything on the line for Georgia <laughs> if they win. First SEC opportunity in 20 years, and they're trailing by four. Yeah, they're trailing by four, but they really played well in that third quarter. I mean, they dominated the game from a yardage standpoint, and they've done a good job of coming back under Mark Rick. As you take a look at what they've done three times last year, Three times this year, David Green, their quarterback, has engineered four fourth-quarter comebacks in his career, including wins over Clemson and Alabama this season. So the game is right there for them. From the 32-yard line, third and 12, four-man Georgia Rush, Campbell in trouble. A helmetless defensive player, Ken Veal. Lost his helmet, but applied the pressure. Man, what a rush by Ken Veal. 6'1", 311 pounds. That's what's listed in the program. Looks a little bigger than 311. But he just gets a great push off the ball and comes right by Danny Lindsay, the guard. Without his helmet, forces the throw away by Jason Campbell. Man, what a play by Veal. That's going to bring on Damon Duvall, Sean Jones back. We mentioned the absence of both Terrence Edwards and Damian Gary as punt returners. Mark Rick said he just hoped that Jones could hang on to the ball in this position. He's going to let this one go, and it will come to the sidelines at the 25-yard line. 43-yard punt. We've got 13 minutes and 49 seconds left, and the Bulldogs have the ball. Got a refreshing way of laying on a bag of ice. <laughs> Here's Green. Got his man. That one's caught by Gibson out of the 34-yard line. There's the change from Green. Toss to Musa Smith, JT Wall in front. Smith 
Nifty run. Nice cut by Musha Smith. I mean, this is a good audible check by David Green, but a, an excellent cut and vision by Musha Smith. Auburn showed inside blitz, and that's why David Green checked to the outside play. But watch the vision and the cut by Musha Smith. The block by JT Wall on Dontarius Thomas, and then the cut right inside that block by Musa Smith. They go from second and long to a third and a very workable four yards to go. Officially, they'll call it three. This has been the tough area for them now. They're 0 for 6 on third and 3 to 5. Green across the middle, caught by Johnson, then the fumble. Recovered by Auburn. Horace Willis, number six. Well, they get the conversion. We've seen Michael Johnson catch the ball in traffic, and he does that, but it's a good stick from Mark Brown. The middle linebacker is the guy who jarred the ball loose, and then Horace Willis comes up with the fumble. Good catch, but a heck of a tackle by Mark Brown, and Auburn with good field position now on the 42. That is the first turnover for Georgia tonight. And remember, they don't have their fullback, Brandon Johnson. They're playing with Michael Owens now at fullback. David Pollock, Jonathan Sullivan combined for the tackle on first down. As you take a look at a dejected Michael Johnson on the sideline. But again, the absence of Brandon Johnson changes Auburn's style a little bit. Here's the uh, attempted sweep, Ronnie Brown, and there is Tony Gilbert. The middle linebacker, number 42, Ronnie Brown, open to scoring today with a 53-yard touchdown run. He's also caught passes out of the backfield. All in all, an excellent day. Yep. This, the touchdown scamper from 53. Took a pop there. But it's third and 11. He comes wide to the left side. Georgia with three down. They bring five. Campbell across the middle of his tight end, but it is far short. And then a late flag comes from across the field. We have seen uh, some good defensive stands. We have illegal formation against the offense. That penalty has declined fourth down. One thing you got to keep in mind with Tommy Tuberville I'm is just thinking that. he is prone to go for a fake punt. And there, this may be the kind of situation he's looking for. Now, I don't see from a personnel standpoint the people in that he would want in for his fake punt. But don't put it past him. As many times as these teams are exchanging punts, that Tommy Tuberville might try to win the game with a big play on a fake. So Duvall is back. And here is the punt, and again, it's not very effective. It's picked up on one hop by Sean Jones, and Jones down the sidelines and out of bounds at the 50. That was a terrible punt by Damon Duvall. I mean, I, I don't understand what he was trying to do on this. It almost looked like he was hurt kicking that ball because, I mean, Georgia came after him. This wasn't even a return setup. They were trying to rush the punt from the right side. So they're not even really setting up a great return, and it was such a low kick that Sean Jones was able to pick it up on the fly and bring it back up the field. A poor kick by a very good punter, Damon Duvall. And he's got punts today of 13, 33, and 34. And now Georgia first down at their own 49, 7, 14 to go. Green has to run. And just does hang on to the football. Dante Booker with a, a heck of a tackle. Now let's check the stat of the game brought to you by Home Depot. Total yards. Georgia with 191 in this half. And they have held Auburn to 55. So complete reversal of roles for these two teams. 
Backs in the eye, blitz threatened. Green backs away and changes the play. Green launches it deep. It's picked up. Intercepted by Traveris Robinson. And it was right in his hands. This was a little bit of a force by David Green. I mean, he's trying to get it all back on this one play, and nobody was really open. I mean, he's going to try to hit Michael Johnson over here, but it's not open. I mean, there's a lot of blue jerseys back there defending this route. And Traveris Robinson is just watching the quarterback the whole way. Michael Johnson not there. Mark Brown with a good lick on the quarterback. And Auburn in business. 536 to go, second turnover of this half. Here's the handoff, Brown. <laughs> Could Illinois be the new fly in the oil? I think they possibly are. Fighting Illini have become flies. Second down and eight. Here's a play fake from Campbell. Nice job of getting by the defender. And then he's tackled at the 38 yard line. It's going to be third down, 445 remaining. Well, Auburn, in seven wins, they've averaged 241 yards on the ground per game. Almost 100 less than that in the three losses. And today they have rushed for 199, but most of that in the first half. And most, it's very different right now without their fullback, Brandon Johnson. Michael Owens is not the same kind of fullback as Brandon Johnson, so you're seeing Auburn doing different things running the football than they did in that first half. Third and five. And again, Campbell keeps it. And heads back to the right side and is tackled. That's our guy, David, David Pollock. Pollock. He's been quiet, but he made a huge play there. And Jason Campbell on the last two runs has looked kind of tentative, like he doesn't want to make a mistake. And David Pollock, who has gotten beat on the misdirection a couple times today, gets away from the block of Robert Johnson and gets enough of the shoe of Jason Campbell to bring him down. A huge stop by David Pollock. That is uh, not a sack. It was a running play. So Pollock still with 11 for the season. The clock with 3.30 to go. And Duvall to punt. And again, this one returnable. Sean Jones at the 35. Comes right with a heck of a block. Boy, was it ever. And Jones to the 43-yard line. Ben Watson, the starting tight end, with a monster block on Mark Brown, the starting middle linebacker. That was quite a block. Another low kick from Damon Duvall. Watch this thing set up. A, sh a low kick, and right there's the block. Ben Watson, wow, knockout block. Now here's the season for Georgia. 3.16 to go, the ball at the 43. Give the ball to Musa. Nope, they're gonna throw it. And it's complete on the near side in front of Carlos Rogers. First down and 10. Here's Musa Smith coming to the near side. He gets out of bounds. That stops the clock with 2.52 to go. Auburn has only one timeout left. Georgia has two. Take you back to one thing now, similar to last year in the game that came down to the final play when Georgia needed a touchdown. They need a touchdown again now. This was a year ago, Cadillac Williams. And then what turned out to be the final play of the game, Jasper Sanks, they called a running play. They did not have timeouts remaining. We're back to play here. Here's Green, up in the air, incomplete. Wow. Off Lucky. the hands of Michael Johnson. The point I was going to make, as Don Terrius Thomas not able to come down with that interception, is last year they had to go for a touchdown because they had two field goals blocked by Alton Moore. Today, they've got to go for a touchdown again, trailing by four because of a missed field goal by Billy Bennett, who is one for two in the ballgame. Third and eight. Gibson and Johnson head left. A 
Green fires it too high. Way high. Yeah. And Gibson was open. Gibson was open, and uh, again, he's got the bad thumb. And you got to give him a little bit better ball to catch on this. It's an out route from the far hash, so it's a long throw for any quarterback. But David Green has to get that one down around the numbers for Fred Gibson. And now a must-go situation on fourth and nine. Mario Whaley is in the lineup. He's in the slot. Michael Johnson has been the go-to guy. He's at the bottom, number 25. They've got to have eight. There's the inside to Johnson. Looks for room, can't find it. The ball goes over on downs. mistaken they went for a play similar to this against Florida when they needed a play and didn't convert they go to a wide receiver screen it's a blitz by Auburn and really Mark Brown number 52 diving at Michael Johnson was the guy that disrupted that play watch Mark Brown number 52 he doesn't get the tackle but his stop or actually it's Reggie Torbor that makes Johnson change his direction and come back inside where there's other blue jerseys. And Tommy Tuberville knows his defense gave him a heck of a play. On first down, the handoff to Brown coming to the left. And Georgia will try and knock him out of bounds, which yeah. they've done. And he's got to stay in bounds. I mean, that's, that's not what he wants to do. Well, eight different times. Auburn has spoiled Georgia's championship hopes. 88, 87, 83, 79. Georgia has two timeouts left, and they didn't have to use one there because Ronnie Brown gave him a break by running out of bounds. Second and seven. Yes, it is Brown into the hands of Ken Veal. And now, Georgia will use one of its timeouts. One timeout left. Two minutes and 21 seconds remain. Third and five. Some kind of a bootleg, maybe even an option in this situation for Jason Campbell. Great drop back. Now he rushes and is down at the 37. And Georgia will use its final timeout. So they'll get the ball back with about two minutes to go in the game. 2-11 remaining right now. Damon Duvall comes on to punt for the eighth time. He's had one of 56, but he's had three that have been yeah. very ineffective. His last three have not been very good. And he needs a good one here. Sean Jones at the 30-yard line. And another poor punt. It'll be taken by Jones at the 25. Looks for blocking help. Has it. And is out to the 41-yard line. Another low kick from Damon Duvall. That one even bounced away from Sean Jones, but because it was so low, he still had time to field it and get it upfield for a good return. Georgia, even though they don't have any timeouts, this is a lot of time to move the football. A minute 58. 59 yards away. And Green on first down. Comes to the near side. Michael Johnson makes the grab, stops the clock at the 45. Johnson out of bounds at the 45. Second down and six. You know, think back to a year ago when David Green engineered a big come from behind touchdown drive. Randy McMichael, who's now getting paid for play. That's right. Veron Haynes made the touchdown catch. They won that one by two. And it was the poise of David Green as much as anything in a hostile environment that got him that win. There's a second and six. Green steps up, goes deep, left side, has a man open, and now it's caught. And out of bounds inside the 20. Fred Gibson. They got him single coverage with Horace Willis. 
Good protection because Auburn came with pressure, leaving Horace Willis one-on-one -on, -one on the outside with Fred Gibson. And this time, David Green puts it in a spot where he can catch it in his body and not have to go up and catch it only with his hands. David Green got popped by Mark Brown on the linebacker blitz, but not before the big throw. On first down, play fake. Green comes to the near side, a bump, and no flag. It's ruled incidental contact in the end zone. Carlos Rogers against Fred Gibson, second and 10 at the 19. I'm sure that Ronnie Brown is feeling a little shaky in the end zone. 21-17. Thing to remember now for Georgia, they can get a first down, which will stop the clock without scoring a touchdown. They can get a first down by getting it to the four-yard line. Musa Smith comes in motion. Green across the middle, and it's knocked down at the line of scrimmage. DeMarco McNeil was being blocked by Josh Brock but he was able to keep his hand free and knock that ball down. On a short throw, you want your lineman maybe to cut that defensive lineman, but DeMarco McNeil able to keep his outside arm free and get the deflection. Third and 15. Green in the end zone, man open. Roderick Hood tipped it. Watson was there. What a play by Roderick Hood. He kind of fell back on it. He was the underneath coverage. And Rose Green was covering over the top. See, Roderick Hood is more concentrating on the wide receiver, but he reads the quarterback's eyes and falls back in, in position to make the, the knock away. Good job of Roderick Hood reading the eyes of David Green. Fourth and 15, Johnson left. Again, they can get a first down without scoring a touchdown. Gibson wide right. Blitz, Green in the end zone, up for grabs, it's caught! Oh my goodness. Touchdown, Georgia! Oh my goodness. Michael Johnson! <laughs> The Georgia Bulldogs have taken the lead. Oh my goodness. That's <laughs> all I can say. Michael Johnson, on a career day, makes the biggest catch of his career on Horace Willis. It was Horace Willis that was victimized by Fred Gibson to get him down into the red zone, and now on fourth down, Michael Johnson beats him for the touchdown. Billy Bennett with the extra point is up and he knocks it home. Michael Johnson has caught 13 for 141, none bigger in his life. Well, here's Fred Gibson right here. Michael Johnson is over here. The coverage is gonna focus over here. That leaves single coverage, Michael Johnson working on Horace Willis, no safety help deep, one on one, and Michael Johnson ran right by him to the back of the end zone and then used that big body to go up and catch the football. Michael Johnson, you see Horace Willis kind of paused there, looking back at the quarterback, and then Michael Johnson jumped over him for the football. Boy, oh boy, David Green, see he looked at Gibson first, saw double, came back to the single side, and Michael Johnson makes the huge catch. How about Michael Johnson stepping up in the absence of Terrence Edwards, their leading receiver, in the absence of Damian Gary, Michael Johnson has stepped up for David Green today. Here's the kick. Auburn with one timeout left. And here's the kickoff by Roderick Hood, the return out to the 28-yard line. Right, let's set the situation now for Auburn. You mentioned they have one timeout. There's still a decent amount of time, a minute 18, and they only need a field goal to force overtime. They don't have to score a touchdown. Now, that's the good news. The bad news is Damon Duvall, for whatever reason, 
doesn't look like he is 100% there, you know, kicking the football, punting it or kicking it. But all they need is a field goal, and they have a minute 18 left. Auburn loads up the right side. Georgia will bring four, drop seven. Here's Campbell up, looks deep, goes across the middle, caught. Robert Johnson, first down, Auburn at the 47-yard line. When you run a two-minute offense or a two-minute drive, the most important play is the first play. I mean, it, it kind of sets the tempo for everything. A good first play for Jason Campbell hitting his favorite target, the tight end Robert Johnson. Here's on first and 15. That one is incomplete. Georgia came with the blitz after Jason Campbell on that time. They haven't blitzed him a whole lot. They, uh, they sold out on that one and came after him and forced the low throw. This is a tough situation for Jason Campbell. This is more what Daniel Cobb was accustomed to, throwing out of the shotgun, the three and four receiver stuff. Jason Campbell a little more comfortable in the two back play action stuff. So uh, a little bit out of character right now for Jason Campbell, but he has to get it done. So. Auburn with one left. Here's Campbell back. There's the sack. There's a fumble, a scramble for the football. Who got it? Auburn got it. And now the Tigers. Well, that's two plays in a row. They've gotten to Campbell and knocked the ball out of his hands. The last one was blown dead. Three plays in a row, Georgia says, we're going to blitz. I mean, we don't think this guy's comfortable being in the shotgun. In this scenario, we're going to go after him. And they bring in Boss Bailey and those other linebackers after him. Right now, it's third and 27. Auburn out of timeouts. David Pollock said he leads by effort. What a resilient effort by the Georgia Bulldogs. I mean, uh, four down territory here. And Jason Campbell, what he has to think now, he doesn't need it all in one play. If he can get half of it here, he's still got another down. Steps up and scrambles. He will step out of bounds at the 43-yard line, stopping the clock with 30 seconds to go. And that will bring up fourth down. Now you need it all in one play. <laughs> now it's fourth down. Now you need to get it all. Fourth and 20. Not many plays in your playbook, even for a, a good coordinator like Bobby Petrino, that you can call on fourth and 20. Here's the play. They blitz him again. Thomas Davis comes. Campbell steps up. Let's it go. It's caught. Trey Smith does not have the first down. The Georgia Bulldogs are going to make a short trip to Atlanta. And credit Brian Van Gorder for his strategy in this last drive. Every play that Jason Campbell was in the shotgun, they went after him. They didn't play any kind of prevent defense whatsoever. They went after Jason Campbell, and they pressured him on every play. Thomas Davis coming from the top on the safety blitz. It's not a full blitz, but they're bringing enough people to get pressure on the quarterback, and in this case, force the underneath throw. Final 19 seconds of the ball game. And here's David Green, the redshirt sophomore, kneeling. David Pollock said to us earlier this week, he's a sophomore, we owe this to the seniors. Seniors like Boss Bailey. Seniors like Tony Gilbert. Seniors like John Stinchcomb. It's not that far from Athens to Atlanta, but it's taken 20 long years to make the journey. Here's Jill Arrington with Mark Rick. Jill? Coach Rick, how does it feel to lead this team to the first ever SEC East title? Well, I'm very thankful right now. And uh, I do want to give praise to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ at this moment. Uh, it's awesome. Coach, talk to me about the resilience of, the resiliency of this team in that fourth and 15 play. Well, the guys don't quit. And um, it's been the MO of this team ever since we got here. And I'm just so proud of them. I love them all, and uh, this is uh, 
One of the greatest moments for me as a coach, I can tell you that. And coach, talk to me about David Green's poise throughout the game and getting it done today. He did. He hung in there. Uh, we kept battling and battling. We thought we could get a touchdown, and it took. It, it, it had to come down to a uh, a one-minute drill to win the game. And uh, I want to thank Homer Smith too for a little help in the offseason. All right, coach. Well, you coached him well. Congratulations. Enjoy this win. Thank you. Now, Mark Richt and the Georgia Bulldogs. Last time this team won the SEC championship, the head coach was the current athletic director, Vince Dooley. For Todd Blackley, Jill Arrington, I'm Vern Lundquist. We'll see you next week from Tuscaloosa.